And a very good evening to you. Watching the news from the CYBC in Nicosia, I'm Nathan Morley with tonight's top stories. U.S. President Barack Obama has resisted pressure to abandon plans for airstrikes against Syria. He has enlisted the support of 10 fellow leaders for a strong response to a chemical weapons attack, though. Obama refused to blink after Russian President Vladimir Putin led a campaign to talk him out of military intervention at the G20 meeting in St. Petersburg. He persuaded nine other G20 nations plus Spain to join the United States in signing a statement calling for a strong international response, although it fell short of supporting military strikes. This underscores the deep disagreements that dominated the summit. At the same time, Washington has tightened security and diplomatic missions in Lebanon and Turkey because of potential threats. They have ordered some personnel out of Lebanon and offered to evacuate those in Adana in southeastern Turkey. The State Department warned U.S. citizens against traveling in Lebanon and southeastern Turkey and urged Americans in the rest of Turkey to be on alert. Meanwhile, in New York, Samantha Power, in her first major speech as U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, argued that a limited military strike was the only option left to respond to chemical weapons attacks in Syria after a diplomatic effort had seemed to fail. Power spoke as President Barack Obama struggled to convince Congress to approve a military strike against Syria. She said Syrian President Bashar al-Assad has barely put a dent in his enormous stockpile. And she added the international community has clearly not put a dent into his willingness to use them. U.S. intelligence agencies have said 1,429 people were killed, including at least 40 including at least 426 children. The European Union's foreign policy chief, Catherine Ashton, today said the EU's 28 nations agreed that available information seemed to show strong evidence that the Syrian government carried out a chemical attack on civilians in August. After meeting EU foreign ministers in Vilnius, she said that they had agreed that the world cannot remain idle and said clear and strong responses were needed. But they stopped short of lending support to military action proposed by the United States and France. Australia's Conservative leader Tony Abbott has swept into office in national elections as voters punished the outgoing Labour government for six years of turbulent rule. Mr Abbott, a former boxer and trainee priest, promised to restore political stability, cut taxes and crack down on asylum seekers arriving by boat. It was frustration with Labour's leadership turmoil that cost the government dearly at the polls. Labour dumped Prime Minister Kevin Rudd in 2010 for Australia's first female Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, only to reinstate Mr Rudd as leader in June in a desperate bid to stay in power. Rudd was given a rousing welcome from dejected Labour Party supporters in his hometown of Brisbane, conceding defeat and announcing that he would step down as party leader. A magnitude 6.5 earthquake has struck Guatemala, close to the border with Mexico, but there were no initial reports of serious damage or injuries. An official at Guatemala's emergency services said several empty homes that had been damaged in an earthquake in 2012 collapsed after the quake. The quake was at a depth of 68 kilometers and it was felt south of Guatemala in El Salvador. The epicenter of the earthquake was just outside Papa Pita in Guatemala around 14 kilometers from the border with Mexico. British police have arrested two men after a breaking at Buckingham Palace this week. It's one of the most serious security breaches at Queen Elizabeth's London residence in around 30 years. A police spokesman said one man was found in the palace in an area which is open to the public. He had scaled a fence to gain entrance to the palace grounds. He was arrested for burglary, trespass and criminal damage, whilst a second man was arrested outside the palace on suspicion of conspiracy to commit burglary. Both men will be released on bail. Queen Elizabeth usually spends August and September in Scotland at Balmoral Castle. 
President Anastasiades has welcomed Paphos Aphrodite Festival and described it as a very important and successful institution. Addressing the opening of the annual festival last night, the President said it promotes not only the coastal town, but the whole of Cyprus. He also announced that the Cabinet approved a subsidy of 5 million euros towards Paphos, which is tipped to be the cultural capital for Europe in 2017. And that's it for our news. Let's take a look at tomorrow's weather forecast. And fine weather is forecast throughout the day. Winds will initially be light, force 3, later turning light to moderate, southwesterly to northwesterly, force 3 to 4 over climb, uh, calm to slight seas. Temperatures will reach 33 degrees centigrade inland, 32 in southern and eastern coastal regions, 31 in the west and north, and 25 degrees Celsius over the mountains. And a quick reminder that the fire hazard remains extremely high in all forest areas. And that's it from the CYBC newsroom. We're back at the same time tomorrow with more news in English from us all here. Good night.